Hi, this is Lizzie, and today I'm going to talk about the future of lending in the post-COVID world. So this has been one of the most challenging times for the lending industry in India. There's no two ways about it. We have experienced one of the most severe lockdowns in the world, which has led to an almost complete cessation of economic activity. At the same time, we have had government announced moratoriums now for six months. This puts a lot of lenders in a very difficult cash crunch situation. They themselves may not have moratorium from their lenders and they need to somehow balance the books whilst the repayments are not coming in. It's been a very, very challenging time. Added to that, we have huge issues of BCP, meaning some of the biggest banks can't actually operate at this time because their services are down thanks to lockdown measures that are in place in some of our biggest cities. Even in the digital space, it's been a very, very challenging time. We've seen a lot of lenders really struggle to get their money back and the moratorium has caused huge financial distress for some of the smaller fintech players. So it really is one of those once in a lifetime scenarios. One of the most interesting things about this time has been the bifurcation in how traditional lenders and digital lenders have fared. One of our observations has been that some of the most digitally advanced lenders, whether that's traditional lenders working with digital lenders or fintech players themselves, have actually been able to continue operations during the lockdown period and even continue to collect and service on their existing loans. That's typically because their customers are more digital, they're more comfortable with digital repayments, and they don't need cash collections to make their instalments. For the traditional lenders, it's been a double whammy. Their operations are really struggling because of lockdown mechanisms in place. They also have a real challenge in terms of their technology stack. Many of the traditional lenders had not invested in things like cloud-based technology. That means that their servers and their tech stack is on-premise and in a lockdown situation that makes it very difficult for them to respond and innovate and build new products. That meant effectively a lot of their operations were on pause at a time when their customers needed them the most. At the same time, given the huge amount of economic uncertainty, both digital and traditional lenders have been very reluctant to start lending again. Until they see the end of the moratorium or a little bit of green shoots in the economic outlook, it's very difficult for them to make good credit judgments about customers and therefore loan volumes have dropped to all time lows. But in the digital space, we do see a pickup coming and we think that is because they've been better at managing their credit risk in certain segments because of things like alternative data. So what we're observing is there's actually never been so much demand for both consumer and SME loans, whether it's from traditional players or digital. The customers are ready. A time of economic uncertainty will also lead to increased demand over the next six months. Plus, you'll see some certain blips of demand. For example, new electronics purchases in the home. People now need more laptops around as children are at home, they want better home entertainment, so there will actually be more demand for products that will need lending financing. But what we're seeing is a very interesting phenomenon, and that is that customers are less willing to go to branches or be served by agents. So obviously our prediction is that digital lending will take a massive boom. What we'll see is more demand from customers for digital and self-serve products, things they can do from the comfort of their own home. So it's a very interesting time if you're a digital lender, but it's also a very uncertain time because the uncertainty exists in the economy. One of our other observations is that it's not just about the digital experience that will serve digital lenders well, but also the alternative data that they have amassed over the last two years. One of the interesting things you will see in lending for the next two years is that the credit bureau score will be less accurate. Unfortunately, at times of this much economic turbulence and when there has been an RBI moratorium on lending, you will see big patches of loss in credit bureau data for many borrowers. That means that the credit score will be less reliable and less accurate for a period of time to come. That's a huge benefit to alternative lenders who have actually invested in capturing alternative data and building genuinely AI-based alternative lending models. Obviously at Zest Money, we have done the hard work. We have a customer base who is deeply engaged, very connected to the brand, and a customer where we've managed to gather a huge amount of behavioral and alternative data on their borrowing habits. 
What this means is that we will be more confident of issuing new loans for the remainder of this year than any of the traditional lenders who still have to depend on much more traditional underwriting such as face-to-face -face interviews or credit bureau scores. So this is a really interesting time where we will start to see the winners and the losers both in the traditional and the digital lending space but we believe that digital lenders who had invested heavily in their technology and their data will see a huge amount of success in the years to come. One prediction for the next 18 months that we would make at Zest Money is we are going to see a massive increase in the amount of collaboration between traditional financial service providers and fintech companies. Especially in the banking space, we've seen a big rush in the last few weeks of digital adoption across all parts of the business. And we believe that fintech players who are the most agile and the most customer centric are really well placed to drive big partnerships now with banks in a meaningful way that will improve the types of products we can deliver to customers in the market. We're really excited about this. We've already forged some phenomenal relationships over the last two years, but we think they are going to accelerate in the next 18 months and that will drive a huge amount of innovation in financial services. There has never been a better time to go digital.